Good morning, YouTube. 6.03 in the morning. Welcome to a full day in the life. This is a bulking update. It's going to be a full day of eating. So, first thing I do in the morning, get up out of bed, walk to the kitchen. going to get myself some apple cider vinegar in right now. So, right away, I have... A full glass of water already out. It's room temperature. I do not drink it cold. The apple cider vinegar is in the fridge. I'm downing right now 10 big gulps of water. On my 10th gulp, I leave the water in my mouth. And that's when I put the apple cider vinegar in. That's when I take the shot. And right after I take the shot, I take one more sip of water. And that's a wrap. So right away in the morning, I'm taking about 12 to 15 ounces of water to start my day every day along with the one shot of apple cider vinegar. Alright, about 15 minutes later, 11 ounces of water, shot of apple cider vinegar, trip to the bathroom. Now it's time for the weigh-in. Remember guys, your true weight comes in the morning after you use the bathroom. So let's get this weigh-in going. Morning weigh-in, 165 on the dot, that's really good. 13.8% body fat. So what I do now, right to the calendar, mark it off, 165 on the dot. And today is the 17th, 165.0 morning. That was 13.8%. And the other day when I woke up, you could see 162, 13%. So Slowly and steadily, the bulk is coming along. All right, it's just about 7 a.m., getting into meal number one. As you guys saw, bulk is going pretty good. Woke up 165, around 13.8% body fat. Just on a side note, my scale tends to put me at a little percent higher body fat than I think I actually am. I'm probably closer to that 13% body fat level right now. But let's get into meal number one. So like always, we got four whole over easy eggs. I got some turkey bacon on the side. I got rid of the regular bacon. I've been eating turkey bacon now. Higher protein, less fat. Like always, first thing I'm gonna eat, sauerkraut. This one's about to be empty. Got a fresh one on deck. Sauerkraut. Then we're gonna take down this bone broth, like always. From there, four eggs, turkey bacon. My carbs for the morning, since I'm on a bulk, I've been increasing some carb intake in the morning, but I keep it tend to keep it to fruit. So I got a bowl of blueberry, a bowl of blueberries, and I got a few dates here. So I'll usually eat two dates, some blueberries, and if I feel like I'm gonna train hard, I'll put honey on the blueberries. If not, I'll eat them plain. Blueberries, dates with my carb source, and let's get into meal number one. All right, so as soon as I'm done with breakfast, I start taking my vitamins. So far for the day, I already took one shot of apple cider vinegar, along with about 11 ounces of water. Now you see me have my meal. So now I got two water bottles filled up already, both filled with water. One is just gonna be water I'm gonna sip on all morning. This one is gonna be my intro workout, which I'll prepare in a little bit. So, just finished eating breakfast, now onto the vitamins. I take two to 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C each day. I take one vitamin E capsule, which is 670 milligrams, 1,000 IUs. I take one vitamin D3, 5,000 IUs. I take three 400 milligram magnesium tablets, so 1200 milligrams of, mag of magnesium. And then I follow that with some grass-fed beef organ pills. These pills consist of grass-fed liver, grass-fed heart, grass-fed kidney, grass-fed pancreas, and grass-fed spleen. If you guys are interested in this supplement, it's from Ancestral Supplements. I have no affiliation. Maybe they'll hook it up. So grass-fed beef organs. So, I got everything but the beef organs in this cup ready to go. I'll take all this in one shot. So I got the 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 1,200 milligrams of magnesium. I got a vitamin E and a vitamin D pill. I'll take all that one shot right now. One shot. And then this serving size is six capsules. So what I'll do, 
I take four now, four out of the six now, and then the remaining two I take tonight with my dinner. Now that's a wrap for meal number one. You saw everything I eat, along with the pills and the supplements I take. Next, you're gonna see me preparing my pre-workout shake, which is meal number two. Stay tuned. All right, next up, we got the pre-workout shake, which is meal number two for me every day. You guys have seen this in the past. So, we got spinach, oats, two bananas, sea moss, almond butter. So what you're gonna notice the difference is I swapped out peanut butter for almond butter. I really started to cut down on legumes and grain consumption. So I got rid of peanuts pretty much and I've been on an almond butter kick lately. Just easier to digest, better on the gut health overall in general. So let's get this going. Like always, you already know, 70 grams raw spinach. on the dot. So we got 70 grams of raw spinach. Next up, we're going to put 150 grams of banana. These two look pretty small, so I'm going to swap this small one out for a bigger one. Or, I actually only got small ones, so let's see. 150 grams of banana total. Let's see how many of these small ones that's going to take. One, 70 grams. Two on the dot is 150 grams, but I'm gonna open the third one because I can't leave scrap without a piece of banana. So, piece of scrap. We got 150 grams in the blender already. Now, 50 grams of oats. This is where I really start to increase the carb intake now, pre-workout. So we got 50 grams of oats. So, so far, the first three ingredients, 70 grams raw spinach, 50 grams of gluten-free oatmeal, and 150 grams of banana. Those are the first three ingredients of the shape. Next up. Next, I like to put in my sea moss. So, another... 50 to 60 grams of sea moss. If you guys need a plug, hit me up, send me a message, I'll send you to my connect. And you guys can tell them I sent you also. So 50 grams of sea moss. First shot, we got 60 grams out. So we're gonna keep it at 60 grams, just like. This. Now, almond butter. This is peanut butter, I'm not using it, that's for the dog. So, almond butter, like I said, I stopped really messing with peanuts, trying to get off the legumes. There's a difference between peanuts and almonds. Almonds actually grow on a tree, it's a tree nut, peanuts come from the floor. So, tree nuts and peanuts are actually different. Tree nuts, you got almonds, macadamia, Brazil nuts, walnuts, things like that. So, a little easier on the gut, easier to digest. So, we're gonna do one serving of almond butter, which is about 32 grams. Same serving size as peanut butter. Now what I do, almonds are not good for dogs, so I rinse off my spoon. So peanuts, they say, are better for dogs, and my dog's been eating peanut butter since he was a pup. 11 years old, you guys have seen Scrap before, so he's going to get his daily scoop of peanut butter. And he waits here every morning until I make my shake because he knows he's gonna get it. And then, so, 
70 grams of raw spinach, 50 grams of oats, 150 grams of banana. I have 60 grams of sea moss in there today and one serving about 32 grams of almond butter. Now, on this bulk, one thing I really increase is my protein intake as well. So we're gonna do one scoop of whey. And like always, here you know, grass-fed whey isolate. One scoop of whey. And one scoop is gonna give me another 21 grams of protein from this. And then what I'll also add now is a half of serving. So one serving of this collagen protein is two scoops. I'll take one scoop out and one serving size is supposed to be 18 grams of protein. Since we're doing half, we're gonna get about another nine grams of protein here. So one scoop of collagen protein to top that off. And then we blend it all up. Unsweetened vanilla almond milk like always. So we're gonna put about eight to 10 ounces of almond milk in. We went with 10 ounces this morning. We're just gonna blend that all up and shake will be ready to go. Like I said, this is gonna be meal number two for me, which is my pre-workout meal, standard every day. So, and like always guys, I'm gonna store this in a glass jar. If you're gonna be making your shakes on the go and having them uh, ready for you, I definitely recommend storing them in glass over plastic. They'll taste better. You won't get any of that plastic seeping in to your drink. So, it's about 7.20 a.m. right now. I gotta take my dog on walk number two to the park. I'll take this shake down around 10, 10.30 a.m. this morning, and then I'll train around 12 p.m. So stay tuned for when I take this down. All right, getting into meal number two, we got the pre-workout shake that you guys just see me get together a little earlier in the day. One thing I wanna mention, guys, I'm very big on getting steps in throughout the day. It's an easy way to burn extra calories and help you maintain that lower level of body fat. That's known as NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT. Those are forms of activity that you could do that you could do throughout the day that are not weight training, not cardio based, just things you do throughout the day to help increase your total daily energy expenditure, help increase your calorie burn. So I'm a big proponent on getting in a minimum of 10,000 steps a day. That's a minimum. So it's 10, 15 in the morning now, and we are 4,781 steps in. I don't know if you see that, but so far at 10 o'clock in the morning, we're already about 5,000 steps in. So by the end of the day, I estimate to be around 13, 14,000 steps of the day. And getting a minimum of 10,000 steps a day is going to ensure you guys that you keep the calorie burn up. It's an easy way to burn those extra calories without having, to, without having to go to the gym, lift weights, or do cardio. So about to drink meal number two right now. And at the same time, I'm preparing my post-workout meal today. So typically on this bulk, I'm usually eating ribeyes post-workout lately just for the extra calories, the extra fat. But today's going to be a lighter day. Mostly you're gonna do a little bit of low intensity cardio, maybe some stretching, maybe some handstand work. So today I have a filet, a grass fed tenderloin. All I do is have it seasoned with salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder. And what I'm gonna season also with is some coconut aminos. I'm just gonna put one serving, about a tablespoon of coconut aminos on here. And this is gonna be marinating for a few hours now. I'll probably eat this around two o'clock. So four hours from now, I'm gonna let this marinate. At the moment, we're training my mom right now. You give me the phone. Got her out here doing a deadlift session. So I'm gonna drink my pre-work my pre-workout shake. Finish training my mom right here. Go to the gym, and then this will be the post-workout meal. With this steak, I'm either gonna cut up that pineapple or I'll have myself some strawberries. That's gonna be post-workout meal. I'm not gonna be really breaking down any muscle glycogen today. It's a lighter day, so no need to intake extra carbs post-workout. So, pre-workout meal, post-workout meal, stay tuned. All right, guys, we are now en route to the gym. So, what am I sipping on? 
This is my pre-workout drink. This is my standard pre-workout, except today it's missing one ingredient. Why is that? That's because I'm not really going in there to lift weights or break down muscle glycogen. I told you, today is going to be a little bit more of an active recovery day. I hit legs yesterday, so today's session, just to get some blood flow to the legs, I'm going to be doing uh, about 20 to 25 minutes of incline treadmill walks at about 3 miles an hour at about a 15% incline. That's going to really get some blood flows to the legs. Not really going to be working on so much endurance factor. That's just active recovery for the legs. And besides that, I'll do some handstand work. So if I was training and if I was breaking down muscle glycogen today, doing reps and sets, what would be in this work pre-workout besides my standard pre-workout powder, I would have beet powder in there. The beet powder is there to increase the nitric oxide production, which is basically increases the blood flow to the muscles, helps you get a better pump. What am I going to be sipping on during the workout? Like always, in my water bottle here, I have my aminos, full essential amino acids, uh, about five grams of creatine, and some glutamine. Again, if this was a hard training session and I was going in there to break down muscle glycogen, then I would throw some carb powder in. But again, since today's an active recovery day, I'm not gonna be breaking down no muscle glycogen, not really getting reps and sets in, just essential aminos, glutamine, and creatine to help with the recovery. And I'll see you guys on the treadmill. Let's get it. All right, so we are on the treadmill now. Nine minutes, 20 seconds in. So let me tell you guys how I do this. As soon as I get on, I put the incline to 10% and the speed to two miles an hour. That's my starting set. I warm up with that for five minutes. So for the first five minutes, I'm walking at a 10% incline, two miles per hour. On the sixth minute, I start increasing. So on the sixth minute, I go to 11% incline and 2.2 miles per hour. On the seventh minute, 12% incline, 2.4 miles per hour. On the eighth minute, 13% incline, 2.6 miles per hour. On the ninth minute, 14% incline, 2.8 miles per hour. And then when it hits 10 minutes, which it just did right now, as you're gonna see, this goes up to 15, and this goes up to three. So I'll stay, all right, go up. So now, there we go. And this is on 15. So now from 10, from 10 to 15 minutes, I'll walk at 15 miles, 15% 15 incline and three miles per hour for the next five minutes. So from minute 10 to minute 15, I'm walking at 15% and three. From minutes 15 to 20, I will start increasing again. So I'll increase 16% incline, 3.1. 17% incline, 3.2, because this treadmill goes all the way up to 20% incline. So after 20 minutes, I'll start doing my cool down. So again, we're at minute 11 right now. So from, until we hit 15 minutes, we'll be at this 15% incline, three mile per hour rate. Let's get it. All right, so we just hit the 17th minute. Like I said, we started increasing after minute 15. So right now, I'm on a 17% incline, 3.2 mile per hour. The intensity is pretty high right now, heart rate's getting up. If I was to increase the incline anymore and the speed anymore, heart rate's gonna become a little too high, not like I wanted it to be today. I'm not trying to burn out or fatigue anything. This is just active recovery. So I'm gonna finish out 17 minutes to 20 minutes at this 17% incline, 3.2 mile per hour. Great, once again, hitting minute 18 right now. So two more minutes at this pace. And I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm sweating it with you right now. And then minute 20, start the cool down. So started the cool down now. As you can see, for the first 20 minutes, it said I went about 0.8 of a mile. I burned just about 200 calories and I was on pace to burn about 600 calories for the hour. I stayed at that pace and 654 vertical distance. I don't test my heart rate on here, but we can check it on the Apple Watch. Let's see. Let's see what we're at. Hundred and thirty, so I was at 157 beats per minute, probably at the highest when I was at 17 and 3.2. Then I just started to cool down. As you can see, 
heart rate is dropping substantially with this cool down. And now this is auto generated by the machine. I'm at a 1% incline at 1.9 miles per hour. And I'll be doing this for another 38 seconds. And that'll wrap up cardio for the day. And listen, if I do any cardio at all, this is what I do. And it would be one, maybe two days a week max. No more than that. Remember, I'm on a bulk now. I'm not trying to burn extra calories. This is just for heart health, active recovery, and uh, just to get a little bit of cardio aspect in. So, 20 something minutes in total. Then we're gonna get some handstand work, and then I got a client coming. So, stay tuned for the post workout meal. All right, so after about 25 minutes on the treadmill, waiting for my client to come, so I knew I was gonna get some handstand practice in. And this is just to get some volume in, in the handstand work. Remember, handstands is something I'm always practicing. It's a move you gotta always try to get better at. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's a true fact for handstands, or at least for me it is. So I'm always trying to stay uh, relevant and stay getting my presses in, stay working on some clean movements just to get that volume in and just the repetitions in over time. So just a little bit of handstand training until my client came, and now you're gonna see. Some of you have been asking in the comment section where, where, uh, where Big E has been, so you're going to see right now. Go. Here we go, Big E doing some hold body that. weight dip holds hold right that. here, and he's looking hold a that. lot cleaner, hold a lot better in these holds. Three. He's getting a lot more time in these holds, too. We're doing about 10 seconds each set, and then we're going as a superset right to these assisted pulls. Now, this is one of the few times, well, it's the first few times we've been training this movement. So he's Two, just getting his go. body used to pulling up now. Three, he's been getting on. good at body weight rows. So now we got assisted pull, pulls now in the, the gym. So this is just get his body pulling. used to pulling itself Six, up. And over time, we'll, de we'll decrease Seven. the assistance easy, that let's the go. machine is applying Eight. him. So Two more reps, let's go, E. Ten reps on this set. Nine, Ten go. second dip Hold holds. This. And that was the routine that we, one of the routines go that we did during this training session. All right, all right. Just got back from the gym, back in the kitchen ready to cook up the post-workout meal. As you guys saw previously, I prepared earlier a grass-fed filet mignon, also known as a grass-fed beef tenderloin. This weighs about nine ounces uncooked, so probably when it's cooked, it's gonna weigh out to about eight ounces. Currently, I got my pan heating up. What I'm gonna do, like you guys have seen before, extra virgin organic olive oil spray. Remember, the only ingredient should be extra virgin olive oil. You don't wanna see no emulsifiers in there, clean, Zero calorie, quick spray, just to coat the pan. Let this heat up, I'm gonna put the flame to high. So, like I mentioned earlier, also I'm gonna be having this filet, and I had a fruit for the side, but it's a little low calorie, and I totally forgot, which I didn't even show you guys, last night I started a new batch of broth, and it's just about to be ready. I started it at 7 p.m. last night, so it's been going for well over 12 hours now, almost about, 18, 19 hours. So I'm gonna have a cup of that with my filet cooked up, along with a side of some strawberries. And like you guys saw in the gym, it was a light day. All I did was active recovery. I did a session on the treadmill, lasted about 25 minutes. That was including the recovery and the warm up. Then I did some handstand training. And then as you guys saw, still training Big E. You've seen the work he's putting in. So, post-workout meal, lower on the carb side today. No muscle was broken down. No need to replenish the glycogen. So I'm about to cook this up. And now for this filet. It's gonna take about 10 minutes to cook. It's a thick cut of steak. So I'm gonna start it up right now. And I'll see you guys back when it's done. All right, so one more thing I wanted to touch base on, which I mentioned earlier. NEAT. Remember, NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Simply that means extra calories burned doing things outside of the gym. Like I said, simple movements such as walking. Just simple activities that you do throughout your daily life all account for NEAT. Non-Exercise non Activity Thermogenesis. Now one of the best things I recommend for clients to do and that what I really try to incorporate myself on a daily basis. Look, after you guys eat a large meal, the best thing that you guys can do to help stabilize your blood sugar levels, to help speed up the metabolism, to help the food digest better, stop from sitting in your stomach, the best thing and the healthiest thing you guys can be doing for yourselves is go for a simple 10-minute walk. 
Doesn't matter if it's cold outside, put on some clothes. When you're walking in the cold, you actually burn more calories. A quick 10 minute walk after every large meal will do you guys tons of benefit. Besides that, it's also gonna add to your step count for the day. Remember, I'm a big proponent of hitting at least 10,000 steps per day. That's gonna add to the need. That's gonna add to the non exercise activity thermogenesis and it's the easiest way without breaking down muscle fibers, without having to think too hard, without having to look for equipment. It's the easiest thing you guys can do to burn extra calories and help maintain that help maintain that lower level of body fat. So I hope you guys start trying to incorporate at least 10,000 steps a day. Listen, if you guys got iPhones, your iPhones track your steps. And it may not be as accurate because you guys do put your phone down. If so, get yourself, a, maybe you guys get yourself a watch that tracks or a small tracking device. They're relatively cheap. Or if not, just use your iPhone, your Android phone. Pretty much every phone on the market comes with an app that you can download to track your steps. Start tracking your steps and you're going to start seeing the benefits that you're going to have. You're going to feel the digestion app happen better. So I did really recommend you guys do that. This steak's cooking up now. I'll see you guys when it's ready. All right, the meal is done. So I got the filet, I got some sauerkraut like always, I got the bone broth, and I got my strawberries. And if you're wondering why I didn't make that pineapple over there, it wasn't quite ready yet. So let's cut into this filet. See how perfect I got it on try number one. Oh, come on, I gotta bring the camera closer for you guys to see this, look at this, look at that. Look at that perfection. All right, guys, this is the post-workout meal. About to get it in right now. All right, it is dinner time. Second meal since post-workout. I'm out with my mom and Jacqueline, who doesn't want to see the camera. And what I am eating now is this amazing burger that I get from this spot in Brooklyn. I'm not gonna be eating the top bun, but I will eat the bottom bun. It'll be one of the only carbs really that I'm eating today, just because I feel like eating a burger. And I got a salad for the side. My mom made a nice bowl of hummus. For her dish, Jack is having a burger with fries. I got the burger with lettuce. So this is the dinner meal for the day without the top bun. And that's gonna be the meal right there. Stay tuned for the rest. All right, so back in the kitchen, final meal of the day. You guys just saw, I ate out that last meal. I had that burger, that cheeseburger actually. I'm not gonna front, it's sitting in my stomach a little bit now. So normally what I would have at night on this bowl that I've been having lately is a grain-free English muffin that I've been finding in, in our Whole Foods. And I've been topping that off with about a serving and a half of almond butter and then some honey. But my fats are kind of high, higher than I tend to like from that burger and the cheese. So what I'm gonna have right now is a bowl of oatmeal. So what I actually do, I like to mix gluten-free oats and cream of buckwheat. I have 30 grams of each weighed out. I already cooked this up right now. And I just topped it off with a little bit of unsweetened coconut almond milk blend just to cool it off and to give it a little bit of creaminess. So what I like to top this off with now, what I'm gonna do, I have this grain-free granola. 30 grams is one serving. I'm gonna put 30 grams of this. One banana. I have some honey. I'm not gonna measure out the honey. I have these chia seeds. I don't usually mess with them, but since I got them, I'm gonna use half a serving. One serving has 11 grams of fat, but it also has a lot of fiber. I'm gonna do it for the fiber right now, but I'm gonna cut that in half. I'm gonna do half the serving, so I'll get about five and a half grams of fat, four and a half grams of fiber from those chia seeds and chia seeds and oatmeal. Give it a nice, thicker, creamy texture also. And then I'm gonna top it off with what I already have pre-weighed out, about 100 grams of raspberry. So, post-workout meal, I'm gonna set this all up for you, and then I'll show it to you when it's prepared. And this is it prepared. Sorry if the presentation isn't too appealing, but I like my stuff all mixed up. I'm not big on, you know, I don't care how my food looks, I just like how it tastes. So, we got the raspberries, the bananas, the chia seeds, the grain-free granola, and half cream of buckwheat, half uh, gluten-free oats. And the cream of buckwheat, if you guys are wondering, is gluten-free, so this is 100% gluten-free meal. Like I said, everything I eat is gluten-free. The only gluten I had today was that half a bun on that burger you ate, so that's definitely causing a little bit of uh, indigestion in my stomach right now as well. So final meal of the night, I'm gonna show you the total macros for the day at the end, and this is a physique update right now bad lighting I guess but this is 160 I'm probably let's do a weigh-in final night weigh-in 
Let's pull out the other scale. All right, guys, final weigh-in of the day. We're gonna go to bed. 168.2, not gonna have my body fat on here right now. So, 168.2, evening weight, and I still gotta take down that meal. And as you guys can see, I'm definitely not as lean as I usually am, but that's the purpose of the bulk. So, all in time, guys, and I told you I'm maintaining. I'm, I'm still pretty lean, guys. My scale put me at 13.8% body fat, which is probably what I'm sitting at about right now with all the water weight. I'll probably wake up back around that 13%. So, last meal of the night right now, and macros to follow for the whole day of eating, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so total calories for the day. Like I said, this was an off day. I didn't really break down any muscle glycogen, so I kept the calories relatively low. 3,244 for the day when I usually eat around 3,500 plus. So, and you guys are going to see, protein. I hit 241 grams. I had 260, 260 grams of carbs, 141 grams of fat. And the macros are as follows. So, the 260 grams of carbs was 32% of my total calories. 141 grams of fat was 39% of my total calories. And 240 grams of protein was 29% of my total calories. Just like I say, guys, when you're trying to cut, I recommend being around that 40% fat mark, 40, 30, 30. And on an on day for me, I switch this. So my carbs are usually around 40%. My fat drops down to 30% or sometimes even lower. And my protein will stay around 30% or go up a little higher. So the carbs and the fats switch on my on and off days. And that's how I manipulate my carbohydrate intake. And one more time for the whole day, as you guys can see, I tracked everything. So my breakfast meal was 761 calories. Pre-workout, 700 calories. That's the green shake. Post-workout meal is my lunch, 611 calories. Dinner, 530 calories. That was that burger. So I tracked that as an 8515 grass-fed beef burger. I put one ounce of cheddar cheese and I tracked half a sesame bun because that's the bun that it was on. I don't track the condiments. I never do. And then my late night snack, which was the oats, 642 calories for a total of, again, 3,244 calories for the day. All right, guys, and that's a wrap for the full day of eating. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for about a month from now. I'll be doing another update for you guys. And don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, share the video. I really appreciate it if you do leave a like, leave a comment. It helps the algorithm on YouTube, helps me get more views out, and I can reach more people. And in that, I'll be able to bring better content to you. So thanks a lot, guys. Peace out. Bar Naturals.